At University of Virginia Health System, we're for bringing advanced care closer to home. So we're bringing health knowledge directly to you with UVA Health System Radio. Here's Melanie Cole. Swallowing is complex and a number of conditions can interfere with this process. What are the most common causes of swallowing problems and what treatments are available to help? My guest today is Dr. James De Niro. He's a board-certified otolaryngologist, head and neck surgeon who specializes in caring for patients with voice and swallowing conditions. Welcome to the show, Dr. De Niro. What are the most common causes of swallowing problems? Yes, well, first of all, thank you, Melanie, for having me on the show. Um, the most common cause of swallowing problems uh, typically happen to the elderly population, and that involves stroke, neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's disease, dementia, and uh, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. That can be also uh, a consequence of radiation for treatment of other disorders, primarily uh, head and neck cancers, as well as uh, neck surgery or uh, neck trauma. Okay, so these causes, these things that are happening in the elderly and because of diseases are, you know, so you've explained to us the people that are most likely to be affected. How do swallowing problems affect the quality of life? And what, I mean, what might signal that this is actually happening? Because sometimes we all feel, Dr. De Niro, a little lump in our throat or we have trouble getting something down. So what distinguishes this? to something that would say, okay, you need to see the doctor about this? Well, sure. Uh, quality of life is a, is a huge issue uh, for patients with uh, swallowing disorders. And the particular uh, signs that this is becoming a more significant problem that needs evaluation by someone who treats swallowing disorders uh, would be weight loss or recurrent pneumonias, uh, those type of things. Are, are really the, the most severe consequences of uh, swallowing disorders. Now, it is very common for uh, patients to complain of uh, difficulty swallowing with a lump in their throat. Uh, and if that's persistent, if that is a recurrent problem, um, then that would also warrant evaluation. How is this diagnosed? What do you do to diagnose a swallowing problem? Sure. I, th- I think the the primary thing, the the best thing that I have to look at swallowing problems is, is talking with the patient. Um, it's just getting a, a good what we call a history, the the onset and the the type of symptoms. Uh, when I when I talk with patients, I ask them what kind of foods are they having trouble with, and uh, what uh, what particular situations do they describe that they're having trouble swallowing in? And that really narrows me in. Um, primarily, there's two different types of swallowing disorders. One is uh, swallowing disorders related to liquids, and that's a whole different uh, set of problems than those uh, related to uh, solid foods, such as uh, meats or breads that people will complain of difficulty with. So if you've diagnosed somebody with one of these swallowing problems, what treatments are available out there? There is, uh, well, depending on depending on the cause, and there is a, a number of different causes for the swallowing problems, but uh, treatments can be broken down into a uh, couple main categories. One is a medical and, and therapy treatment, and that is why uh, I actually work along with a speech pathologist in clinic and we can often uh, provide some of that treatment right in the same day as the visit. And working with the speech pathologist, there can be different maneuvers as far as swallowing that can uh, uh, assist them in their um, in their swallowing trouble, uh, as well as uh, modifying the diet to uh, different uh, consistencies, uh, thickened liquids or uh, softer pureed type foods, uh, and and uh, different conservative things. Um, the other category, the main category, and, and what I'm typically involved in when a speech pathologist isn't able to make those adjustments for a safe swallow, then uh, become the surgical option. And uh, I uh, perform uh, endoscopic uh, surgeries, and that's all through the mouth, uh, without incisions in the neck, and usually a faster recover, recovery. If uh, 
that are not candidates for the endoscopic approach, then I also perform an open surgery with incision through the neck to address some of the swallowing disorders. What is that surgery like? It sound, you know, people would hear about swallow surgery and get very nervous, get, you know, scared. It sounds very scary because this is your ability to eat and to talk. And, you know, so it's really a, a sensitive area. Tell us a little bit about the surgery. Sure. The, so the newer approaches and, and what I am actually a specialist in is these endoscopic approaches. Uh, this is uh, within the, the past 20 years, we've really revolutionized the way we treat swallowing disorders and now have a incisionless surgery, a minimally invasive approach. And for patients, it typically uh, involves coming in to the hospital, spending a, a night over in the hospital, but going home the next morning, uh, and then generally with almost immediate relief, uh, the uh, relatively uh, limited pain, most Patients complain they have a sore throat like they, they uh, had a, a strep throat or something. Uh, and then uh, they are back on to swallowing with uh, the usually the impressive results within. Wow. And is this something that is likely to reoccur? What is the outcome from this type of surgery? Uh, well, the there are certain types of surgery that... Uh, tend to require more interventions, and those are uh, things such as stretching the esophagus, and many people come in saying that they have had a gastroenterologist or other doctor uh, that's performed a stretching of the uh, of their swallowing tube. Uh, however, that often will require repeated uh, dilations, if, if you will, uh, or repeated stretching in order to have a long-lasting benefit. The uh, surgeries that I particularly specialize in uh, where I, I use a, a laser and I actually cut muscle fibers that produce the swallowing dysfunction tends to be a permanent result. Wow, that's that's incredible. And now what is then the eating outcome? Do they have to be on those thickened liquids for the rest of their life? Is there a possibility of needing a feeding tube? Or can they resume eating certain foods and solids? Well, depending on the problem, the, the, the people that are generally surgical candidates uh, from the procedures I was talking about are typically have trouble with the solid foods, and they're in that category primarily. Those patients can mostly resume a normal diet. And they um, they're actually my favorite patients to see after surgery because they come in and they're just so happy that they can resume a normal life. They can go out to eat again with their family members on Thanksgiving and other holidays. They they now can enjoy the social interaction. And and this is a this is an at risk population for depression too. They are usually sixty five and older, half of this age group, half of the Americans 65 and older will have swallowing trouble. And therefore, when we can restore this ability to to eat, it restores a lot of of their ability to have uh, social interaction, and they're at risk for depression as a, uh, as a result of social, social isolation, and we can cure that. That's amazing. And in just the last minute or so, Dr. De Niro, why should patients come to UVA for treatment of their swallowing problems? Well, one thing for patients to, to look for when they're they're evaluating a, a place uh, for a possible treatment of their swallowing problem is to look for someone who's a, a fellowship-trained laryngologist. And that's some of the training that I received. Uh, that is an otolaryngologist or an ear, nose, and throat doctor that specializes in voice and swallowing and has special training regarding that. Uh, there's only a handful of providers in the, the state of Virginia uh, that uh, that provide this service and have this des- designation, of which UVA is one of them. Uh, we also have a team approach to swallowing disorders, and uh, I have a, a voice and qual- uh, swallowing specialized clinic, which I work with the speech and language pathologist. And we can perform some of the swallowing evaluation right in clinic on the same day, We can even perform in-office surgeries uh, for swallowing disorders where the patient doesn't have to be admitted to the hospital and they can come in and out uh, without, they can even drive themselves to their own appointment to have these procedures because there's no sedation, 
or anesthesia other than just numbing the, the throat. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. James De Niro. And for more information, you can go to uvahealth.com. That's uvahealth.com. You're listening to UVA Health Systems Radio. This is Melanie Cole. Have a great day.